Yeah. yeah, it's a little deeper than I like for a 146. Hey! Let's go! Back! Yo, once again I'm back around. Rush it back and stop. Isaac and I are doing a little work at the podcast today. I uh, had a little bit of an unfortunate incident where uh, my dishwasher pipe broke and it flooded the whole bunkhouse. Um, so we're knocking some of that out and uh, now we're going to go ride. Today's agenda for content is going to be comparing a 146 track to a 155 track and showing you how the sleds handle differently and which one's good for what scenarios. Today is going to be our first ride in Sealy. I'm pretty pumped. Uh, we've been riding up north and haven't actually hit Sealy yet this year. Snow tail is showing about 10 inches of snow water equivalent, and that's normally when it gets pretty good to leave the trail. And, um, should be able to ride pretty hard, not like full on winter, but close to it. You know, I like to raise stakes. We was always taught to hit the gas. We ain't even know the brakes. We control our own fate. Watch the drinks take shape. Try to keep us out. We gon' freak out. Turn this bitch to water king. I don't need your mandate. Don't need you to elevate. I'm about to detonate. Cause I'm at my prime. Yeah. I'm at my. I'm at my prime. Said I'm at my prime. We at our prime. This yellow sled is a 155. The red one's a 146. They're basically identical sleds, the only difference is the length. Um, the other thing to notice that's gonna be different is this sled has stock exhaust, that one has a GGB quiet cam, and then it ha they have different tracks. The 155 has a composite M770, which is a three inch paddle, and uh, it's a little different lug design than the M66 on this sled, which is a two six paddle. Both of these sleds have Rogue Concepts rear bumpers, Ice Age bomber rails, Ice Age Hellfire wheels, cold cutters in the running boards, tunnel grips, Cheetah Factory racing handlebars, and some clutching, and that's about it. So they're basically identical sleds, and uh, it should be a pretty good comparison. Careful, I'm a lion, don't test my pride. First demonstration is just the difference between the two while side hilling on a, kind of a, a medium slope. Not super steep, but also not shallow. As you're gonna see here, the 146 will side hill pretty similar to a 155 until you stop on the slope or until the slope gets really steep. And once it gets steep, the 146 just picks the front end up and kind of wheelies through it, and it gets really hard to control. An experienced rider can kind of tame that and uh, still navigate in a side hill pretty well, but a novice rider is gonna have a really hard time balancing in a side hill while having that much ski lift. Another thing to note is a 146 always washes out faster than a 155. If you think about it, there's about that much less track in the snowpack, so it makes sense anytime you're under throttle that that back end's gonna kick down and kick out from under you a little bit faster the shorter the sled is. Also, a 146 takes a lot more skill to regain momentum in a side hill or to start from being in a stopped position. You have less track in the snow and less traction, so you know it's gonna trench down and you're gonna have to really force that front end down the hill and work the sled to get going again, where a 155 just kinda gets momentum right away and smoothly takes off in a side hill. So in this situation, I would pick a 155 over a 146. Since the day I was born
in a wheelie competition, which is going to win, a 146 or 155? You probably can guess this one. 146 almost always wins. The only exception is when it's deep and steep. The 146 just flips over backwards, and in that situation, 155 will wheelie better because it'll carry momentum up the hill with the skis in the air. Let's talk about hopovers. Hopovers are easier on a 146 on shallow slopes or when the snow's really hard, but the rest of the time they're actually easier on a 155. Because of the shorter track, the 146 pivots really fast and you have to ride faster and respond a lot faster. The other issue is when you do hopovers in deeper snow on a steep slope, it just uh, kind of turns into a bow tie and you don't actually get enough momentum to make a corner. My opinion is that it's easier to learn a hop over on a 155, but once you're an extremely skilled rider, you have a little more opportunity for um, doing hop overs in tight trees on a 146 because you can make those switchbacks that much tighter. When you're making that switch back and you're pivoting from going this direction and then going straight up the hill, you need a lot of traction to carry momentum around that corner. And that's kind of the big thing that uh, gives the 155 the advantage. You just have that much more track in the snow to make a nice arch and get traction around the corner. <laughs> That 146 hopover was a good example of why hopovers get hard in deep snow. When I landed that hopover, the sled basically just wanted to flip back over and would you know it would have turned into a bow tie at that point. Bow ties are pretty much always easier on the 146. There's a few reasons for it. One, you're not as far out of the snow, so it doesn't feel like you're falling as far, and it's easier to control it because the front end doesn't get so high in the air. The other reason is it doesn't take as steep of a slope to get the front end up, so you can practice them on a lower slope angle, and it makes it a little bit safer when you're learning that maneuver. Also, if you flip the sled over on top of yourself, it's again a little bit less risk because that 146 is never as far out of the snow to fall down on top of you. It more just like gradually tips over on you instead of getting up high and slamming down on top of you. So a 146 is going to be almost more like a 360 uh, and the 155 is going to be a more dramatic actual bow tie shape.
My final summary of the 146 versus 155 is basically that the deeper the snow is, the longer you want, and the harder the snow is, the shorter you want. I would pick a sled more based off the conditions you ride rather than the maneuvers you're trying to do. Thanks, Chase. Sorry, dude. Besides getting roosted, how's the film day been, Isaac? Dude, it's going good. The weather's been great, snow's good. Good people to ride with and film. Aw, you mean that? I mean it. Aw.